Okay, so we're going to pull on this bottom box. Let's call this bottom box M1. We'll call the top box M2. Let's define some other terms. First of all, the bottom box is going to be sliding across the ground. Therefore, what kind of friction is involved? Kinetic. So we'll call this mu k. We'll just call it mu k. Okay. Then this one on here, what's the force that keeps the box on? Static. Static. So up here, there's going to be a mu s. There's a mu k down here at the bottom and a mu s at the top. Okay? Um, I think that's good for defining our terms. So what should be our first step? Free body. Free body. Now notice we have two boxes. Which one are we going to do the free body on? Both boxes. Yeah, we're going to do our FPD on both. So let's do the easy one first, M2. Okay, so does there gravity acting on M2? Okay, I'm going to just call this M2G. You guys okay with that? You skipped a couple steps, right? FG is equal to MG, M2G. Okay, what's pushing back up? A normal force. We'll call this FN2. This is the force from the bottom block pushing up on the top block. Anything else? Friction. What direction is friction? To the right. Okay. Just like in the truck problem we did. Is this a static or kinetic friction? Static. So we'll call this F friction static. Yes? Well, again, back to kind of like the truck problem. If, if there was not enough static friction, if I pulled this, this would just stay still. It would look like it's going to the left. However, the reason that this accelerates, there's no rope attached to M2. So the reason M2 is going to move forward with this bottom block is because the friction between these two is the force that's going to push it forward. So if there was no friction here, what would happen to the block? would definitely just stay there, right? You just pull it right out from underneath it. So it's the friction itself that pulls the block with it, pulls it forward. Let's do the big block. Let's get some of the easy ones out of the way. Is there gravity on that big block? Yep. So we'll call that M, this is M1 now, M1G. The ground is pushing up, yeah. So we'll call that F N we'll call it F N one. So this is the ground pushing back up. Any other ones? Uh so let's get some of the easy ones out of the way and then we'll get the hard ones later. So there is a tension, right? We pull the rope. And then we said there's some friction back here. So some friction slowing us down. So we'll call this force of friction kinetic sliding on, that's the friction sliding on the ground here. Now whenever looking for forces, you always want to think about contact or touching. Is there anything else touching the big block? The little block. Okay, now what's the little block doing to the big block? pushing it down, right? So the little block is pushing down on the big block, so there's a second force pushing down on the big block. We'll just call that M2G, right? It's the weight of the little block pushing down on the big block with the force of M2G. Okay, anything else? Well, that would be on this, and we got took care of that already. That would be the normal force, right? So we took care of that on the little block. Remember, FBDs are always on the block. 
There's one more force. And this one's kind of hard to see. Let's go back to this problem. We'll take Fufar here. If Fufar starts to slip, okay, so I'm going to pull on it, and he's going to start to slip. Notice, what's his butt doing to the car? He's resisting it, right? So he, there's a resistance due to the friction between him and this right here. So it's harder, it's easier for me to go like this than when I push him on there and try to pull him through. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say like the M2 friction will slow down the M1. That friction between M2 and M1 will also slow down M1. So it's going to go in the opposite direction. So there's another for friction force this way. So we, you can see the friction underneath it, right? That's easy to see. But there's also the friction on top of it as well, holding it back in the same way as it would underneath it. So this one we're going to call, uh, again, force of friction static. And notice, conceptually, this should make sense. If this block pulls on M2 with the force, what should M2 do to M1? Pull back with an equal and opposite force. So that's Newton's third law again. This pulls with this force, this pulls with the equal and opposite force. Okay, and those are the same. This FSS, FFS, and this FFS are the same. Okay, next step. <coughs> So we're going to do uh, the equations for both blocks. So in the x, we're going to have FFS, static friction, equals M2A. M2 is the thing accelerating. In the y direction, well, we're going to have FN2 minus m2g equals m-a-y. But what do we know about that? It's zero. So hopefully this makes sense to you. At this point, you're getting this concept that this normal force on this little block is the same as gravity pulling down. That those two forces are equal to each other. OK, let's do this side. Fx, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to have tension minus Ffs minus Ffk equals M1A. OK, tension minus this minus this equals M1 acceleration. In the Fy, Well, this one, maybe you guys could just do it conceptually. Take a look. What's going to be true about the normal force of N1? Equals M1G plus M2G. Right? If this block was 10 newtons and I put a 5 newton block back on top of it, what should be the normal force? 15 newtons. Same concept here. Okay, now if you do the math, you'll see that works out as well. But start seeing if you can do some of these conceptually. Okay, now we're just going to start substituting and solving our equation here. Equations. Ultimately, what am I looking for? Tension, right? So I'm going to start with this equation. Let's make some substitutions here. So we're going to go tension. What's the equation for friction? Mu times normal force. So I'm basically taking this equation, right? We're going to start solving it. Mu times normal force. Now this was the mu static times the normal force on block 2 minus mu k. This was the normal force, remember, on block 1. That's going to equal m1a.
Okay, good. Um, but we know these normal forces, right? What are these normal forces? Okay, mg, m2g. So let's just go ahead and do the algebra. So we'll write m1a. We'll add these to both sides. So that should be m1a plus mu static. Go ahead and make this substitution into here. m2g plus, go ahead and make this substitution into here. mu k times m1g plus m2g. Now I'm doing these with variables because I want you to see how it's done, but you could at any point start substituting in numbers if you don't like this. We do have a slight issue here. What's our slight issue? Our acceleration, right? How are we going to get rid of this acceleration? Look what we have right here, right? So let's go throw that acceleration into there. So T equals M1 over, oops, did I do that wrong? No, M1 over M2 times static plus blah, 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 blah. And we'll go one more step. This will be our final answer here. Force of friction static, we actually know that, right? That's mu times normal force static. So we already have that. That should be mu static m to g plus mu static m to g. You could simplify that one as well. Mu k m1g plus m2g. Wasn't that fun? Hopefully somewhere along the way you understood kind of what we're doing. At the end this was just kind of algebra, substituting, solving things in for other things. And again at any point you could start putting numbers in if you wished. Yeah. Because I was lazy. Okay, any other questions?